Jesus was always using comic imagery to make his points. Uh, for instance, if you know the Lord and don't speak of him, uh, that's like using a bucket as a lampshade. Or if you're a hypocrite, you're like a tutting eye doctor complaining about the speck in your patient's eye, all the while a plank of four by two protrudes from your own. If you're trying to be good, but you're not born again, you're like a thorn bush trying to produce figs. And if you're trusting your earthly currency to buy you a heavenly welcome, well, you'd have better luck threading a camel through the eye of a needle. Let's listen in to the context of this comic imagery that Jesus brings. As we saw yesterday, Jesus thinks that we need to be utterly childlike and dependent if we want to get into the kingdom. But a rich young ruler seems to want to take a different route into the kingdom. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. Now a man came up to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? Had the man been listening to Jesus? I mean, his approach could not be more different to that of the little children we've just been reading about. Those little children were gathered up in the arms of the king and they were just happy to be little children with Jesus. They didn't try to earn anything. But here comes this man, this rich young ruler, trying to earn everything. As we'll see in this passage, to the helpless, Jesus opens his arms and bids them come. But to the self-confident, like this rich young ruler, Jesus employs a very different tactic. Verse 17, Why do you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied. There is only one who is good. If you want to enter life, obey the commandments. Which ones? The man inquired. Jesus replied, Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not give false testimony. Honor your father and your mother and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus uses the commands to undermine the man's self-reliance. But it's not working. Verse 20, all these I have kept, the young man said. What do I still lack? What does he lack? Everything. He lacks everything. I mean, the Ten Commandments are not meant to be a tick box form to reassure the moral. They describe the life of heaven, the life of God's Son. So Jesus lays it all out for this man. Effectively, he asks, can you live my life? The life of utter self-giving? Can you be perfect? Verse 21, Jesus said, If you want to be perfect, go, sell your possessions and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. Verse 22, when the young man heard this, he went away sad because he had great wealth. Finally, the law exposes this man. There he stands in the presence of his only hope for salvation. He should confess his need and cry for deliverance. He should take the position of an undeserving little child and he should just ask for Christ's blessing. But instead, he leaves. It's so tragic. And then perhaps Christ speaks these next lines within the earshot of the rich young ruler. I like to think so. Verse 23, Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you the truth, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. A camel through the eye of a needle is more than a little tricky, right? Like, I mean, even with a food processor, that's tough, okay? Um, camels can't go through needle eyes, and rich people can't get through the gates of heaven. They just can't. They can't. This is shocking language. In verse 25, when the disciples hear all this, they were greatly astonished and asked, who then could be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, with man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. The disciples are, of course, greatly astonished because to them, the rich seem like they are the best resourced, the most blessed, those with the most to offer. And if their resources don't count, then what currency will be accepted in the bank of heaven? Especially when we consider how good this rich man has been. All from since, since his youth, he has been obeying the commandments. That's, that's his own assessment of things. But... There is morality to this young man, but neither his money nor his morality qualify him for the kingdom. Jesus does not give us even a glimmer of human hope in this teaching. 
His point is not that the camel should go on a diet, right? He's not saying that we should grease the beast and push really hard, okay? He's saying a camel can't get through the eye of a needle and a rich person cannot get themselves into heaven. Cannot. Impossible. Even good rich people can't get themselves into heaven. It is impossible. From the human side of things, we are lumbering camels, and heaven is as open as a pinprick. But the view from God's side is very different. Today, let's take the view from God's side. Today, forget the earthly striving. Forget about your money. Forget even about your morality. Today, believe in God's impossible possibility. From our side, we are lumbering camels and heaven's gates are a pinprick. But from God's side, heaven is as open as the arms of Jesus and we are little children. Mm -hmm.